Rourke's popular race to San Marlo got underway from the squadron line on Friday morning, with nearly 200 boats taking the start. The first Cows to San Marlo race started on the 24th of August 1906. Just four entries began that inaugural race, of which only two finished. The race continued to grow over the years, reaching a peak of 300 in the 1970s, when offshore racing was at its most popular. This year's fleet had a light southwesterly breeze with an east-going tide, which caused the boats to bunch at the inner end and then played the shifty breeze along the island shore, past Egypt Point and into Gurnard Bay. 49 boats started in Class 3, of which 38 finished, and it was the French in the lead positions, with Mark Noel's J92 China Blue taking first place on corrected time, just 42 seconds ahead of Fabrice Trapreze's Du 434 Major Tom. In third was Chris Chulas's Sigma 38 with alacrity. 58 boats came to the start for Class 2, and there were just five boats which didn't complete the race. But again, it was the French who took the top three places. Eric Mordray's JPK 960 Leonardo took first place on corrected time, ahead of Agence Direct. Just two of the 47 boats competing in Class 1 didn't complete the race, and this time it was a Brit who took first place. Puma Logic, owned by Sailing Logic, finished in lead position on corrected time, ahead of Philippe Delaporte's Penazen and Emmanuel Le Mens Pen Coent in third. In Class Zero and Super Zero, there was only one boat which didn't complete the race out of the 41 starters. Again, the French dominated in Class Zero, with Jerry Trentisseau's Courier de Coeur taking first place and the overall position in IRC. Charles Iville on his J133 JB3 took second place, with Kodiam ENSP taking third. Although Bear of Britain made a somewhat relaxed start, crossing the line under just a headsaw, she came good at the end to win Super Zero, ahead of Venomous, with Formidable 3 taking third place. Just three multihulls took the start, and the biggest and most impressive was the 50-foot trimaran Letterie de Saint-Malo, owned by Victorian Erusard. They weren't entered, so were not included in the results, but they made for an impressive sight as they blasted down the Solent towards the Needles. Of the two Malta hulls which were entered, it was Ben Goodland's team Ebersbacher which took first place, in front of Joel Maladell's Tancred. The Contessa National Championship was hosted by the Island Sailing Club over three days, with one race on Friday and two races each on Saturday and Sunday. There were 16 boats competing for the championship, and the Island Sailing Club had to contend with some rough weather to set courses. This very pretty classic 32-footer has a formidable reputation for her seaworthiness and has been tried and tested by some of the most rugged of long-distance sailors. So it was little surprise that this fleet would be well able to handle the rough conditions. The first race was dominated by Blanco, owned by Richard Banner, with Eldred Hemsworth's Drumbeat second and Mr N Bradley's Merrick II in third. On Saturday, the committee set the windward leeward course on the north shore. A strong force 5 to 6 southwesterly with wind against tide gave the boats more of the conditions that they revel in, and after a short delay, racing got underway just after 11am. At the first windward mark, it was Merak 2 which rounded first, closely followed by Drumbeat and Blanco. At the leeward mark, there were no place changes, but drama was about to unfold when a crew member aboard Germana fell overboard. The crewman was able to hold on to the boat, and other members of the crew were able to pull him back on board, but they quickly recovered the spinnaker and carried on with the next beat. At the finish, Blanco had dropped to fourth, leaving English Rose in third and Drumbeat second, with Merak two in first. By the end of the day, Blanco had recovered to take the win in race three, with Gurlin taking second and Drumbeat in third. Going into the final day's racing on Sunday, Blanco held the lead by three points from Drumbeat. And after scoring second in both race four and five, she secured the victory in this national championship. Merak too took second place. Despite winning races two, four and five, with no discards in operation, her seventh in race three meant she finished three points behind the winner.
Drumbeat took third overall, with a third and a fifth scored in the final day's racing. And despite the rough conditions, our camera woman gave a thumbs up to filming these lovely boats. Eight team Darings came to the start of the Cows Keelboat Solent Series, which this weekend was run by the Royal Thames Yacht Club from the Royal London's line. The boats had a running start against the tide in a force 5 to 6 southwesterly breeze. At the start, the fleet split, with some taking the outer end to cross the tide towards the north shore, heading towards their first mark, which was our way a yacht master, whilst the remainder of the fleet took the decision to start in the middle or at the inner end and run along the island shore before crossing the tide to the first mark. It paid to cross the tide early, and Giles Peckham, sailing dauntless, rounded the mark first and set the trend for the rest of the race, finishing three seconds ahead of Decoy, with Defender taking third. We caught up with the Dragons as they approached our way a Yachtmaster, and it was Supremacy which held the lead round the following two marks. This was not to be the case for the remainder of the race though, as at the finish line it was Njord taking first, with Caramba in second, and Supremacy dropping to third. The British Classic Yacht Club Regatta gathered at Cowes Yacht Haven on Saturday for the start of their annual regatta in Cowes, and this year they were joined by the modern classic Spirit Yachts. This classic regatta has been coming to Cowes since 2002, when they first arrived with just 10 classic yachts. Now they boast 50 yachts for this year's regatta. The definition of a classic yacht is subjective, but the club's definition includes many of the most beautiful boats still sailing some of which have great racing records whilst others represent design milestones in the development of sailing yachts. The Classic Regatta precedes the International Six Metre World Championship and the International Meter Association Centenary Celebrations, all of which have been invited to join in the Classics Week, so there will be a feast of beautiful boats on the Solent over the next two weeks. The first race in the Classic Regatta got underway on Sunday with the Round the Island race. This year the boats were sent east about with a start from the Royal Yacht Squadron's line. The fleet started in an easterly force 4 to 5 with a favourable tide, but they were to face several weather changes throughout the day, with thunder and lightning, downpours of rain and bright sunshine. The Spirit Yachts were invited to join this year's regatta, even though the build is modern. These beautiful yachts have been crafted by blending classic looks with modern design. When the producers of Casino Royale, the latest James Bond movie, decided they needed a yacht to match James Bond's image, what else could it be but a spirit yacht? When you see one sailing, you'll understand why. At 6.30 on Sunday evening, as we went to press, we heard that the yachts were becalmed at Yarmouth, with many taking the decision to retire and motor back to cows. Watch out for next week's report, when we'll bring you more coverage from the British Classic Yacht Club's regatta, the International Six Metre World Championship and the Red Funnel Cows Keelboat Series. The Sixes have 47 entries for their World Championship, with racing starting on Thursday and running through to the following Monday. Join us next week for all the action from these beautiful boats.